your data show us. Now we will be having an open panel of discussion with a We are going to talk about the conferences of Dr. Esparza, Peter Holt, Dr. Larson, where they've analyzed in most of them an aspect that has to do with trust, meaning the acceptance or the reject to vaccination. I would like to introduce the panel now together with us is Maria Elena Villar. Maria is an associate professor and chief of department of communication from the School of Communication and Journalism from the FIU. She is in charge of different courses on communication strategies. She has a PhD in public health and in communication from the University of Miami. She works on communication and culture and social determinants on public health in the prevention of domestic violence and sexual violence. She works on everything that has to do with stigmata due to HIV. And she has very important data about trust and vaccines. Maria Elena has several publications on international journals together with us. We have a doctor, Dr. Naveen Taka. He's a pediatrician. He is an executive director of the International Pediatric Association. He works in Muharab, India. He was president of the Asian Pacific Pediatric Association between 2016 and 2018, and also the Indian Academy of Pediatrics. He's an advisor is part of the advisory groups. He's an expert in measles, rubella, and in pneumococcus diseases. He was one of the pioneers in the fight against polio, and he was recognized in the day of fight against polio. He has mul he received multiple awards, multiple prizes, and he has published uh, multiples, editorials, and papers in distinguished journals. And finally, I would like to introduce another friend, Dr. Ulloa Gutierrez Rolando. He's a specialist in pediatric infectious diseases from the National Hospital, Children's Hospital, Dr. Carlos Sáenz Herrera from Costa Rica. He has received several national and international awards for her for his scientific achievements. He's a member of the National Academy of Medicine from Costa Rica and from several scientific associations. He's author and co-author of more than 75 index publications, and he has been speaker in more than 107 international conferences. He's one of the reference in Kawasaki's disease and vaccine preventable diseases. He has created a multi-center network, the most important one in Latin America, called Camp Latina, where they analyze the clinical aspects and treatment of children with Kawasaki diseases that includes more than 20 countries in Latin America. And this network has recently been working with all those diseases related to COVID. And I would like to start with our first slide so that then we can open the panel for discussion. This is what happened nowadays in this world where the pandemic has impacted in a global fashion and we're in this cloud of work we see several words that were mentioned throughout this day, anti-vaccine groups, against science, anti-science, fake news, ineffective vaccines, loss of trust, rumors, skepticism, fake news against toxicity, all the things that tend having an impact, Twitter, Facebook, tons of words that I would like to analyze together with you. 
And let's start with Dr. Maria Luisa Avila so that she can choose words from this cloud and can make some suggestions, comments to share with us. Then I would like to make some comments myself about the analysis that we do from the Digital Health Observatory. Thank you very much, Roberto. Fake news. I would choose fake news. Unfortunately, fake news travel really fast, even faster than a virus. And then it becomes also a pandemic. And with technology, with the social media, it's very easy to make the people believe that this fake news is true. This is causing a lot of trouble, a lot of damage, and there are several scientific articles that have been published refer how parents, for example, are influenced with regards to vaccination with this fake news. And also rumors, rumors expand and travel through the social network also. The parents hear about these rumors and sometimes uh, news that says that a kid died because he received a vaccine, then it's, uh, it is understood that it's because of the vaccine. And in reality, the kid died because of something else. So this initial news is a rumor. It grows and grows. It has a lot of satellite news with a lot of reproduction, and it's fake. And for that those parents that were not sure about giving a vaccine, it ends, it ends them convincing the parents that there's no need for to vaccinate a child because it's dangerous. So we must understand the parents. We must be empathic with them also. We know about these topics. We understand about medicine and vaccination, and we need to be clear with them also. Thank you very much, Maria Luisa. Maria Elena, which words would you choose from my cloud? I also looked at rumors and trust. On the one hand, social network have been beneficial because they're a massive way of communicating. But on the other hand, they can distribute misinformation on purpose or not. Many are trying to do harm, but sometimes some normal people, ordinary people that read this news and think that they're true. What I would like to say is that this is a crucial moment, a vital one for cooperation between strategic communicators and the health system, because we as communicators dedicate to do good communication, uh, using innovation, using different frameworks, using, using different agendas. There are useful manners to communicate through the social network or through the social media. There are studies and we already know why people choose to share one content over another because they are more agreeable, because they are nicer to read, because they feel more confident with the publications, because they are not aggressive. People like to share ideas, to be, or to turn into an opinion leader, to give useful information, to manage their own reputation. So we could create content on vaccines, helping people with these motivations to use social networks so that they also can distribute the information. But the good information on vaccines, uh, as in marketing, the, the, where they test different strategies, they do assessment, the same sort of uh, innovative action should be done. We have learned a lot about our public, how the public processes the information based on suggestions on their culture, and they share this on the social media. 
So we must use these new technological tools to analyze the content of the social network to understand what the what what is the people opinion or what are the people opinion and to understand if something is dangerous or not if something works or not if it is enough with the advertising that we've done so we must be intelligent and understand how to use the social network and this will increase the trust thank you very much maria elena dr navin which words would you choose which ones would you analyze uh, again, choose trust because trust yes. trust is the key. Uh, can you hear me? Right? Yes. 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 Yeah. So, uh, uh, if you if it is coming from the trusted sources, people believe it, and uh, we have seen in uh, uh, this conference uh, uh, that uh, uh, what Hedy Larson has shown that uh, 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 if uh, you know if, the, if uh, uh, misinformation is circulating but if it if it is anyhow uh, it goes hand in hand with the tr uh, trusted sources like uh, uh, if you people have trust in government people have trust in uh, say system they they will uh, if there is a misinformation it is not coming from uh, these sources they will not believe it similarly there is still high trust in the medical professionals and but sometime what we have seen that uh, we uh, say unknowingly become multiplier of misinformation uh, when there is some 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 news comes in the closed circuit groups like WhatsApp, and we forward it to the other groups, is it true? We you know we just forward it for the confirmation without realizing, without analyzing ourselves, and then people believe that if it is coming from a doctor or from a source, then it becomes uh, really problematic. So we have to be very very careful that we we have to. What, you know what is the topic of this uh, session this digital health and social media so we have to promote the digital health we have to empower the people they can they can check the facts themselves not just forwarding blindly and becoming unknowingly becoming multiplier of the information that's very very important that we have to empower the people to check facts themselves and as uh, Maria Elena said that you know there is a when it when it comes to the vaccine anti-vaccine people uh, or the uh, they they are very active on social media they are very well coordinated they are really very well organized but we who believes in vaccine we 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 use social media for many other purposes but not uh, propagating the message of uh, uh, value of vaccine. So we we have to we have to become active on social media. We have to learn how to communicate because it is the days are gone when we say I am scientist or I am a medical professor and you trust me. We have to learn how we communicate the science. Somehow we have failed in communicating uh, science to the community, and that's very important. So finally, I would say trust is the key. But we must learn how to use that trust which people have on us to communicate the science. I think we will discuss more. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Muchas gracias, Dr. Navin. Uh, Rolando, ¿qué palabras tomarías de la Bueno, buenas tardes. And well, what would you choose? Well, I would choose all of the words because all have got pros and cons. But I think that one, most of the harmful words would be freedom because let the people decide to receive a vaccine or not, that's a mess. We must create an order. Of course, we all have rights, but I would say freedom would be for a child that has a meningitis 
to be able to walk without sequela because he was vaccinated and protected. That's freedom. That's freedom for me. So that a child can live healthy, that can live in the world healthy, being able to breathe without the need of an oxygen tank because he has a sequela due to an, in pneumonia because of influenza, because of lack of vaccination. The word freedom has several interpretations and it has been misinterpreted several times. And I would say that this problem with the herd immunity, it is not fair to suffer from a disease if he could get rid of the disease. And this is why, because there is a group that does not want to get a vaccine. So we need to protect the herd immunity. And this is also a right violation of the children, because the children, the child has a right to be vaccinated. And that's, that's a sort of aggressive uh, action against the children. It is an aggression also. It is a violation of the children's right not to have a right to health. So uh, there are lots of words that I could choose from there, but freedom is very important for me. We have the freedom now to express ourselves. In Latin America, we've studied what has been happening with the groups that are for or against vaccines. Pre-pandemic, three weeks before the pandemic started, March 15th for Latin America, the digital social media out of 110,000 communication, we did the analysis of what they said in these messages in the social media. What we've seen is that 18% has some comment about or are against vaccines and the rest are for the vaccines, but this is not the same in Latin America and in the world. We have been studying this during the second month of the pandemic, and we have analyzed a survey with more than 1,700 pediatricians in Latin America, and 37% of them have had questions from the parents with regards to the vaccines. And this continues because throughout the last weeks, we've analyzed those groups which are bigger now, they are interconnected now, and they are not only group against vaccines or pro-vaccines, but they start having different compartments and they are now against science also. So people that give vaccines to their children, that they, they themselves receive vaccination, that, but that wouldn't receive the COVID vaccine for the time being. Who would like to comment? I think that Maria Elena is eager to comment about this topic. Well, I agree what you have said and with the comments from the panel at large. Here is where we must understand the motivations, the beliefs, and the culture of... I am not talking about the culture of a country. I am talking about the ideas that they have or who they regard as an authority on the subject. And we must use some of the same tools that the anti-vaccine and anti-science groups use, trying to talk to the feelings or that what Dr. Joe was mentioning. They consider an aggression to vaccinate a child without uh, to vaccinate a child, but it is an aggression not to vaccinate the child also. And but that is very difficult to convince them. 
we must analyze what values they have, what set of beliefs they have, and then work on that set of beliefs to so try to convince them. It's not a simple slogan. It is a, a harder work. A very good comment because international groups of experts say that digital communication, digital media, they're like two hemispheres. They do not talk uh, between them. In the anti-vaccine group, what we are seeing is that they have a sort of religious methodology. They are sort of resistant to the message that comes from outside. That is why to understand how they communicate, how they think, what are the set of beliefs, it's difficult. Dr. Naveen, you were nodding, considering that there was a sort of light at the end of the tunnel. Can you comment, sir? Do we have any hope? We have a hope. If we if we if we utilize the opportunity, the COVID vaccine uh, is also an opportunity. The COVID pandemic is also definitely there are hardship, but there is a definitely opportunity if we utilize it. And uh, as I said, it's all about trust. If we if we use that trust and we communicate, we be transparent. We don't give false uh, false hopes, false assurances. And uh, if we do a good job of communicating, how do we deal with COVID, and how 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 we communicate uh, about the vaccine? Even if there are limitations, we have to convey that. You know, now uh, going forward, no vaccine going to be perfect, but we have to communicate, and that's why I said if we do that, definitely it it is both way. If we do that well, and those countries who are doing well for the COVID uh, management, uh, you do well and you will, they, there will be good, not only vaccine uptake for the COVID, but also whatever we are lagging behind in other vaccination will also improve. But if you don't manage that well, we don't communicate well, and we, uh, then it is likely that it is going to affect adversely also. So it is uh, next six months, how as a scientific community we are able to convey science to the community you know our uh, uh, communities how can, how we can uh, make uh, uh, use of the trust what they have in us as a medical professional as pediatrician uh, uh, or as a health professional that will be very crucial and we can definitely utilize this opportunity to our advantage Over. okay muchas gracias we know you we know you since much long before you became a minister and we know about your actions your governance of uh, health in costa rica and uh, today we heard a word that dr carlos Espinal taught me a few weeks ago which was the health diplomacy or vaccine diplomacy and now vaccine diplomacy begins to have a role in communication regarding vaccines and the digital communication media whether it's the russian vaccine or the chinese vaccine or the u.s vaccine so we have the mixture there of nationalism and how would you how do you how would you look at this if you were the minister of health of your country or in the region how would you react vis-a-vis -vis these issues what tools would you have i am asking you difficult questions sorry no problem really 
this is a concept that has been uh, has been used from some time always seen in the way we're going to uh, deliver vaccines to people and how we will it how however covid and the vaccine against SARS cov those have changed all this in what country beforehand was it the president of the republic that would announce that there was going to be a vaccine as happened in the case of mr putin in russia they he said that they already have the vaccine but it hadn't been published that even phase one and phase two had been published now it's like unfortunately the vaccines have become political it's something that we need to avoid because um, i don't think that because it comes from one country or the other the manufacturer of the vaccine necessarily means it's going to be good or bad there are digital excuse me development platforms for vaccines that at present have really at the, are at the service of mankind and of humankind and we just hope that the vaccine will be effective and safe and especially that it will be available for everyone regardless of the country from, from where it comes and i think this is going to be an equity issue and we have to try to have the best negotiations and agreements in order for the population especially the susceptible population in all countries to have access uh, to one of these new products. Rolando, I will put you in a situation that and, uh, that has happened in Latin America and that we've also seen in the social media. We started looking at the social media and saw a phenomenon that we call the three peaks. Where there was a certain vaccine, the AstraZeneca vaccine, where there were three communicational peaks. One had to do with the day in which, in Latin America, the agreement between the University of Oxford and AstraZeneca, Argentina, Mexico was launched. So it was like a communication peak which was interpreted by us at the observatory like they were really celebrating the initiative or clapping for it. And we saw the adverse event with AstraZeneca vaccine in the UK, and then the communication was much more intense. And we called that a phenomenon that we called involving a negative involvement with the vaccine. And then when, once again, the effect, and when the effect was known not to be related, then we saw a different effect, and that was the appearance of the anti-vaccine, people saying it's a lie, that the adverse event was unrelated. There surely it is. And so this was it wasn't a communication of peak, it was a, a drop in intensity throughout time. If in each of those phases, you would have to analyze this, how would you consider it from the communicational aspect? You're very active in the social media. How would you analyze this, especially when the anti-vaccine groups uh, appeared in the third peak? Excellent question. What we always know is that the headlines are good selling. They call the attention of people. If they, so if you see this headline, you suddenly are surprised and see, and they always attract people. Some and companies depend on the number of its and those, and this is a marketing tool. Unfortunately, this happens with everything, with people's reputation, with the news, and eventually it's the fake news but the damage has been done so the communication strategies are very important and how we face those problems that is a whole art so clearly a case a severe case presumably attributed to the vaccine will get, make more headlines that how many people will eventually benefit from the vaccine and that's because the newspapers in Argentina and Costa Rica and India and the US and Canada and Australia headlines is what sells. If you just look at a newspaper, there's more bad news than good news. The bad news is like, they represent a sort of a negative environment, if you wish. So that's important. Another issue is what other option do people who do not believe in vaccines see for to control this? I don't 
think there is another one. We know because of epidemiology and the numbers that we need to look at TV, open the newspapers and see the reality. What do we believe? What do we want? We want more poverty, more families destroyed, more life plans destroyed. Some people have may have a company a plan. They had to have five, 15 years working in a hotel, in a restaurant, and they lost all that in a few months. How many children and adults, older adults have been have become ill or been damaged because of the lockdown and all that. So the question is, how much more poverty are we willing to accept? And Dr. Avila has said this and already and others as well. The d disease makes the poor people poorer. So in no matter where, now Asia and Africa, all those countries that are developing countries forever, we're going to get even poorer because of the disease. And the other issues, the collapse of the healthcare systems. So it's not fair for someone who has taken care of himself or herself and needs to use an emergency service at a hospital or because has an act, they have an accident. Those people that have taken good care of themselves all their lives and need to go to the hospital because of an emergency, they can't get care because the hospital has collapsed or because the country has not been able to understand the message. So the, those things should make the headlines that those rights and the freedom of those diseases to have an available bed at the hospital. It's a complex issue, but clearly this is our daily activity. Show the effect of the disease, what this has caused versus the potential risk of a vaccine. You take uh, any any medication. If you read the insert, you're probably not going to take it because there's so many untoward effects. But so we need to compare that with what we see, the reality we see every day. So we need to make them understand this perception of what's happening. It's just we need to wake up every day. I will ask our specialist in the panel, Maria Elena. Maria Elena, we are seeing that those that information that becomes viral distributed widely we've had this we've seen this in the southern hemisphere as well those are people there there's there's some latin americans robert kennedy others german countries in europe but I think it's what Rolando says. Something starts with a great headline or focus is made on a sign of alarm. They self-call themselves great scientists. They, we've analyzed that they have many degrees from countries where maybe we can't really confirm that those degrees are and they create this communication disaster it's complicated is, is it not the case maria elena what would you say i believe that you are touching on the credibility issue so on one hand yes of course the headlines experience of institutions that they're affiliated with, all that creates a certain credibility that seems to assign to them this credibility. That's what happens. Scientists and people with a more ethical um, approach or where tend to say we're not so sure, we need to check this. Well, Maybe that person didn't really graduate there, they just spent a few months at the institution. So those who are want to convey more sensational uh, headlines don't have the ethics that those of us who communicate through research. So the solution, I wouldn't say the solution, but one strategy would be to try to uh, provide media literacy. To ex well, to explain what is the real source of that message, for instance, check for those things. Another one would be to renew the credibility of the institutions because not only with regards to health, but also all the government institutions and corporations and multinational companies, they have very low credibility currently with the public at large. So what's happening is that they believe an influencer more or a family member or someone who 
Otras calificaciones, aunque, as no other personas, qualifications de, different de, from de, our scientists that cannot be confirmed, but they somehow appear to be credible. And they say, well, that company just wants to make money. That government is just uh, wants to um, exert power. Or uh, some part of the fight, I believe, is to identify which organizations and sources of information will be considered credible and work on that credibility. That's a whole science, how to work on organizational communication and communicating management. We need to provide a service, bring positive things to people so that when the communication brings along negative things, they still believe. WHO has suffered a lot with regards to COVID in the US because initially they had some hesitance and because of course the problem is but those who are ready to attack take advantage of the situation to say look they they're not credible you know it's really complicated it's a whole work that we need to carry out all the time it's like caring for the reputation if you will you use two words reputation and credibility and then another word that we leave to analyze that is the media gap, the gap in the media that these pseudoscientists uh, take advantage of. Because nowadays, if you know various technologies, that mediatic uh, gap will allow these groups to. Uh, we want them to be influenced with a good science. Rolando. Or you want to make a comment because I give the floor to Dr. Navin. In America, Latin America, we have enough things, enough problems, lack of access, poverty, dictators, economic problems. Every year in Central America and the Caribbean, we have floods, hurricanes, the cities are destroyed and we become even poorer. We had been able to leave some diseases, then we had dengue, then we had Zika, then we had chikungunya, and then some start to get up, and then something else happened. So we try to rise, and then a pandemic comes along. Now, many children will lack education because those children who will not receive education will have less chances to have, find good work, more poverty for themselves and their families. So it's a really a vicious circle, cycle. So we don't know why people don't look for options to control this pandemic and vaccination undoubtedly is one of the most rational options that we have we do not have a lot of time but education is a huge topic Three days ago, Insight on Education has published a document on 191 countries in the world to assess how many days were lost in education. 60% of all the days lost throughout this six months come from countries of high resources and middle income resources. And the rest comes from low-income countries, children with are digital native children that were born with the digital media. We have a few minutes, Dr. Navin, so you know that I know that you had a role, a very important one, in the control of the polio disease with the anti vaccine groups working for the polio control in India. If you had to choose three key words so as to block these groups and according to your experience, what three words would you use? So uh, three words will be, first will be community engagement, which is uh, an ownership, because that's very important how which uh, that help uh, help us in uh, uh, polio eradication. Second, second, uh, uh, I will say uh, the best thing in India for polio eradication was that uh, it was not a political issue. It never became a political issue. Uh, all the parties supported uh, polio eradication, irrespective of their po political, you know, um, uh, affiliation, uh, and. Uh, 
Uh, third thing was uh, 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 again uh, uh, it was uh, uh, I will say very meticulous uh, 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 micro planning and uh, a sec uh, the uh, the uh, uh, you know if you just focus on polio they will not listen but then you have to see what are their problems so I think these are the it's a uh, you know we can talk long on polio but. Uh, these are the some of the learnings from polio that uh, you have to engage the community and uh, there are no watertight compartment now we talk about social media it spills over from community to social media and from social media to real life community so we have to uh, tackle at uh, every level and again finally i will say trust is the key if you have trust of the people they will not believe others whatever their qualification but they will believe you and as scientist, uh, uh, as a medical professional, we have to occupy that media gap. What you said, you know, that there is a media gap because we don't utilize that. We have to do that. Thank you. Perfect. Well, let us imagine that there is a door here and we must choose one word to talk to the anti-vaccine groups or anti-science group. Just choose one word just to say goodbye to the anti-vaccine groups. What word would you choose to put in this door that leads to the solution? I would choose one word. I would choose transparency, meaning that transparency in the data uh, especially in those countries, as Rolando mentioned, in the poor countries, transparency is needed to achieve something. We need to explain the people what science lies behind the vaccination and why we are for vaccination. Rolando or Maria Elena, one word. I would say dialogue, meaning that we need to understand each other. Evidence, for me, evidence, stringent evidence of the impact that this has had. Dr. Naveen, one word, just choose one word, please. Where would you focus your fight against the anti-vaccine groups? Uh, one word. Okay, so uh, uh, I will uh, I will not focus on anti-vax, but I will focus on those who are you know hesitant. And anti-vax are very small, but I my energy I will focus on those who are undecided. So, uh, and uh, for them, uh, uh, the, the, the key will be transparency and uh, a, a real communication plan. Communicate them with honestly and conveying them all the scientific facts, what, what they understand, you know, uh, understanding their values and perception. Uh, so it's a difficult one to, to say in one word, but that will be my approach. Perfecto. Bueno, yo quisiera agradecerle a María, María Luisa, no la dijiste, ¿no? Ay, María Luisa, your word. No, you were leaving me outside. Mi palabra sería consenso. My word would be consensus. That has to do with everything that we were talking about. Okay. So, we are all looking in that direction, we want to reach a consensus by means of a strong evidence, being transparent, and generating a fruitful dialogue between these two hemispheres in social network. On the one side, the anti-science and the anti-vaccines, and on the other side, those of us that think that evidence helps people and especially it causes an impact in those countries that are poor. Thank you very much for having you all here. It has been amazing 
I apologize if I made inconvenient questions, but I think that we must have an open debate. And this is part of our mental exercise to learn how to communicate on a difficult topic as vaccinations that brings so many problems to public health. Thank you so much.